Monique Stubbs Hall here. I am on the campus of Johnson C. Smith University, and I am privileged to speak with the president of National Black MBA, who's actually host Char Charlotte Chapter. Yes, thank you. Who's actually hosting the event this evening? Um, can you tell us your name? Tell us what your position is, and and also explain to us what it was that um, caused you to pull these components together because I understand we have the networking and then we're going to have a, a discussion yes. and then we'll move into um, the showing of the movie Bulse. And so can you let us know a little bit more about the thought processes behind all of this? Well, actually, CIAA um, brought the opportunity to me based on HBCU Rising and we'd just come off of an event with CIAA partnering with them on the um, Minority Business and Leadership Symposium. So they reached out and said, hey, Toy, this probably be a good event for National Black to host a watch party for Boss, the Black Experience in Business. Just understanding, hey, you know, that we have a growing number of entrepreneurs in our membership, um, and we service the community by providing professional development to uh, minority business owners. So thought it was a great opportunity to honor black business owners and entrepreneurs are bringing bring us together as a community um, to just understand the plight of African Americans in business. Um, and so thinking about the film, focusing on the history of Afri um, black o business ownership, the discussion today will be focused on present day um, experience in black business. Yeah, yeah so um, that's a great question. For me, I am a strong believer in purpose and having meaning in life and finding meaning in the work that I do. And um, it, within my organization, we teach, we provide soft skill training and development for millennials and Generation Z. And so for millennials and Generation Z, purpose is extremely important when it comes to the work. And so with that, we have a workshop that we do that helps individuals find their purpose. And one of the things I talk about when it comes to finding your purpose is what did your parents do for a living? What did their parents do for a living? What is the work that your family, particularly your, your parents and their parents, have done that perhaps you have been placed on this earth to, to carry out and to finish? Monique Stubbs Hall here, excited I'm on the campus of Johnson C. Smith University, and we have another great in the room today uh, that we would like you to meet. You know, our theme this evening is boss, and we're talking about the black um, entrepreneurial experience and blacks in business. And so we'd like to meet our uh, guest over here that's going to interview with me, and uh, tell us what you do in the Queen City, and tell us why this topic is so important to you. Well, I'm Kevin J. Price, and I am the Senior Director of Supplier Diversity for Novon Health. And Novon Health is a healthcare provider in this community. We've been here over 100 years. And we are here to, to care for the community holistically. We want our community to be well. We want you to physically be well, but we also want you to be financially well so that you have resources to take better care of yourself, to eat well, to uh, provide better choices of foods and all of those things for a holistic, well-balanced life. That's why I'm here, is to make sure our diverse businesses have an opportunity to succeed and work with us to provide products and services to us so that we can provide a remarkable patient experience within this community. So in my world, there are two large networks. There is the National Minority Spot Development Council Network and Dominique is here as the leader of the Carolina's Virginia uh, Council. And there's also the Greater Women Business Council, which is under the Women Business Enterprise National Council, which certifies women-owned businesses as well. They operate differently from one another. Uh, and one of the, I think, differences that I see a lot is uh, the women tend to want to network with each other. So when I go and my counterparts go in the room and uh, we're thinking they want to do business with us, which they do, uh, but they really want to do business with each other. So I end up sticking my card in people's hands <laughs> with women entrepreneurs. And they're holed up talking about how they can do business with each other. It's really quite fascinating. And then with MSDC, it is the minority businesses want to do business with me and my counterparts. 
And I'm saying, why are y'all doing more business with each other? Let's reinvest in each other and rise both together. Because I really believe, I truly believe, we have everything we need already. So if there's anything I'd like to see going forward is whether it's in contracting, I press my general contractors that are minority and women. Are you doing business with other minority and women on businesses as subcontractors? It's not all about you. I need to make sure this money is going downstream because those folks also will be potential patients. And I need them to have resources to pay for care too. Y'all follow that? Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes for other uh, specialties as well. I really need you to come to us with more of a value add. So the new thing that I'm hearing with my counterparts is more around economic impact. So a lot of corporations are talking now impact within the community. You all have heard some corporations talk about job creation, right? Well, I'm, exi I'm existing in this community because I'm creating a thousand jobs in this community. So you should love me for that. Well, we want to cascade that down. We're not just creating a thousand jobs as our corporation, but when you get beyond that and look at the supply base and those ancillary jobs that are created, make that a part of your narrative when you're talking with the corporation about doing business with them. That part of what we're here to do is create jobs that you can also talk about potential customer to those in your community as part of your existence. That's really important to us. So that's where I see this film is more around the economic impact. Monique Stubbs Hall here, and I'm so excited. We're at Johnson C. Smith University, and we are here meeting another boss in the Queen City. Can you introduce yourself? Tell us who you are and what you do here in Charlotte. My name is Tanya Dow Bethune. I am with MF Bank. I'm a senior vice president and senior commercial lender. Awesome. Well, this evening's theme is boss, and it has to do with the black experience in business. Can you give us your take on that? Well, with MF Bank, we support small business owners. So, boss means us providing economic empowerment for the small business owner. I Monique Stubbs Hall here at Johnson C. Smith University. Completely excited to introduce this next boss that's here uh, on the campus of Johnson C. Smith. We'd like to know what she does here um, in the Queen City and also a little bit about why she's excited about being here. Can you share with us, please? Absolutely, Monique. Thank you so much. I'm Dominique Milton, the president and CEO of the Carolinas, Virginia Minority Supplier Development Council. And what we do in relation to BOSS is we help businesses to evolve. We help to build wealth by connecting minority business owners with supply chain opportunities. So we build wealth by creating opportunities in our local communities for our businesses to grow and then they can hire folks and then that's how the wealth is built. Here, and um, you all are a great panel. Um, what, what I, the question I have is a lot of businesses in this room and across America, they try and do it on their own. And we know that the success rate of businesses is 50%, if that, all right? So can you all talk about the value of aligning with an advocacy group like the NBA Association, like the NMSDC, um, and how that, two different perspectives, how that benefits you as a corporation, how that benefits you as, a, as an entrepreneur? Well, I talk about that. Our success is really the product of the CBMSDC, the council, um, the chamber, the National Black NBA. Um, it's the old adage, a lot of people need, need to work not only in your business, but a lot of times own your business. So, for example, there's a different part. Every time your company grows, your company changes. So, who we were in 2012 isn't who we are now. So, it's going to take a totally different company. So, two, two years ago, I went to Tuck. It's a program that's put on by Dartmouth, you know, sponsored by the Y. And it taught, taught us about scaling the business. We learned how to build an infrastructure. So if you start hiring people that are not or owners of the company, how do you set them up to succeed? I've also attended the University of Richmond through the council. So for us, it was the ability to build those relationships met, but also use all the resources and tools to sustain the business and grow. So it's helped us a lot. 
Monique Stubbs Hall here at Johnson C. Uh, U Smith University. We are so excited today about this event. And who do we have here? Please introduce yourself and tell us what you do here in the Queen City of Charlotte. And why are you excited about today's event? I'm Monique Eric Watson with Kaleidoscope Group. Uh, we do diversity and inclusion, full service consulting. And excited because this is about black people doing business in a community that is needing and deserving of our services. Absolutely. We know the title boss um, indicates many different things to you when you hear that title in relationship to what we're about to see. What does that mean to you? You know, in the entrepreneurial spirit, I think we're all our boss. Whether you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneur, you got to be in charge of what you want, what your passion is, and what you want to achieve. So boss has a lot to do with how you're driving, you know, your own personal life. We appreciate uh, you guys coming and sharing your thoughts and ideas and insights. Uh, my name is Manuel Campbell, Executive Director of Inspire Community Capital. And my question is really around, what do you do in the meantime? While you're scaling, and we're talking about these great opportunities that present themselves, what do you do in the meantime as you're trying to grow your business? And before you get to Novant, and before you get to a point where now I can go to m and Bank and have this opportunity for this great fund that exists, because I have to survive, I got bills to pay, I got responsibilities. So my question is really around, what do you recommend for people in the meantime? Yeah, it takes. And when you get where it takes, still, you're broke. Yeah. You're still broke. Um, because once you get to that, that's where, once you make that money, most people, that's where they go broke because they think they have the money. Mm -hmm. So you have to really get to that level and, and get, keep that mindset. Of, like you said, living below your means. But once you get that money, you're still broke and reinvest it to multiply your money. Most of us, we get it, but we don't know how to multiply it. So how do you multiply your money? And surround yourself with people that can teach you how to multiply it. And if you're spending it, you, you, you're always gonna be doing whatever it takes. So that, that's my view. Yeah, and I would say, um, you can hit on a little bit, Eric, but just the importance of saving and stacking money while you have your corporate job. And part of that is beneath your means. So I would say stack your money. Get a roommate if you are living single life. For what? Why do you go my home by yourself when you're trying to start a business? There are certain things you have to sacrifice. Um, and then the other thing I would say is we live in the age of the side hustle, right? So you can get a side hustle with just about any day. I will be quite honest with you. I still to this day do Airbnb. So I have you know space in my home and I rent that out. It pays my mortgage and it always has. Why would I stop, right? It doesn't make any sense because I can take that money and I can reinvest that back into my business. Um, as you mentioned, so finding a side hustle, whether that's doing Airbnb, whether that's doing Uber, whether that's doing Postmates, whatever it is, there are ways that you can make money if you're hungry enough, right? But it comes with a level of sacrifice. So the trips, may have to go. The car, may need to go. You know, there's certain things that you just have to give up until you get to that third year, fourth year, fifth year, where you're able to, you know, kind of just put your elbows down just a little bit. Um, but like you said, mentally, you still have to, to uh, manage your money as if you are still living kind of poor. Because um, at the end of the day, I mean, you don't really start making money until five, seven years in. Monique Stubbs Hall here on the university campus of Johnson C. Smith University. Completely excited to be able to bring more bosses to you. Uh, that's our theme for this evening as we talk about the black uh, business experience. And so we have, uh, I understand, one of our panelists for the discussion today. And, um, and then we'd, what we'd like to do is for you to introduce yourself, uh, tell us what the name of your company is and what you do and we'll have we'll get that from you as well and tell us uh, why you're excited about this event this evening uh, my name is Donovan Everett and I'm president of DA Everett Construction Group and uh, I'm actually like say I'm gonna be a panelist for tonight and excited to uh, be here to share our story my story of growing a business growing a business from where it is where it was and where it is today and share that experience and hear other panelists talk about their experiences and what what they're bringing to the uh, table today to, to share what, what they're going to share today so okay. awesome and i understand that you're not here local in the queen city you are in north carolina right what part yeah we are in our based out of raleigh north carolina but we actually have um construction projects here locally in charlotte um so we've worked around the Charlotte uh, area, so we, we cover all of North Carolina, but we're headquartered in Raleigh. OK, 
Okay, well, we're excited that you came down to the Queen City <laughs> from Raleigh. Yes, thank you. And your name, please. Uh, Wendy Nixon. I'm Vice President at DA Everett Construction Group, along with Donovan. Awesome. And why are you excited about this evening? Yeah, just to hear how um, how different companies have have grown and, and like Donovan said, he's on the panel and just wanting to hear him, how he's sharing his story of how he started the company and hopefully people will will be um, motivated by that and, and just hear his story as well. Okay, and it's always great to have great support. And so uh, I know you're excited that she's here as well to enjoy the evening. Well, thank you all so much and you all have a good time. Thank you thank so much. You. All right. Mm -hmm other giving back to the community we really try to do that but I also find that you have to figure out when to know when you're giving back and know when you know I don't want to say giving too much but you always get that call and you always get that well, what can you do for us or you feel like because you want the business and you want to get in there you're going to discount yourself more than you should where you're not knowing your value. So how do you get to the point where you say, okay, I know I'm into this and I will put myself in situations where I will offer my services to things I'm passionate about and places that I know that I want to be in that building, but also say, but I'm still a business and you know I have bills to pay too and I'm here to make money and I can't always discount, but then you have that Anxiety, okay, now since I'm not giving you a, a discount, am I going to get it? <coughs> so, how do you get to that point where you kind of know your value, you know, do what you can to try to support, but also know your worth to do that? Yeah, so anybody? I, I, one thing that I would suggest is setting a certain percentage or cap that you intend to give philanthropically every whether that's month or a quarter or what have you. So for me, I made a commitment that I would do two speaking engagements um, a quarter for free, right? And anything outside of that, unfortunately, I just can't do it, right? Because I do have a business to run. So I would say maybe for you, it's two events a quarter or two events every half a year that you that you do for free, that you use to sow into the community, to sow into you know, whatever organization you believe in and support. So I would first set that standard so that you know when you're asked for some level of you know, give back that either I, I met my limit for the month or for the quarter, or you know what, I do have room to give, so I, I'll concede. Uh, you know, what I appreciate the most of entrepreneurs is when they don't give me a discount. Mm. If you come to me and you say, this is my price and I believe it's competitive, and then you walk and you step back, because this is my baby. So like we were talking just a minute ago, um, if your business was your baby, you wouldn't say, well, you know, I don't feel like it's that important. My baby's <laughs> not that important. This is my child. And I've invested a lot in my child. And I've got to grow my child. And my child's going to change over time. So I can't treat that child the same way forever. It may even outgrow me at some point. But my child's valuable. Now, I can invest in my kid, and then the other things that I can do to give back to others. But when you come to us, give us a fair competitive price. And then look at other ways of giving back, like volunteering and investing in other ways. But I think it kind of diminishes the value when I see people give me a discount right off the bat. I didn't even ask for this. <coughs> so all of a sudden, you're telling me that you don't think you're as competitive. It's subliminal. So I'd rather you say, no, I'm going to put the fair price in front of you, and then let me push that from there. And I might say, well, I think you, you need to tweak your price a little bit. And I'm not saying you need to give me a discount. I'm saying you need to get more competitive. Do it that way versus just trying to give something. I don't want you to give me anything. I want you to earn it. And so when you're out there in your network, you're always pushing 
my product, this is what I can do for you. You know, people think you're self-serving, you're putting something, you know, that is leading. But when you're able to say, you know what, I care about the community and how you show up every day, they say, you know what, this is, this is someone I want to do business with. Then they start to ask you about your business because again, they know that you're about something that's greater than you. If you show up like that in the community, they know you will show up absolutely like that for your business. So I would always say find the time to give back and that does tremendous things for your brand. Monique Stubbs Hall here at Johnson C. Smith University, excited about this evening's event that the National Black MBA is hosting here on the university campus. And we have with us a boss in the Queen City, and we want to know your name, what you do here in the Queen City, sure. and tell us a little bit about why you're excited about this event. Sure. So my name is Teddy McDaniel. I'm president and CEO of the Urban League of Central Carolinas right here in Charlotte. And uh, I think tonight's very exciting. Anytime that we can talk about black business, it's an exciting time. The mission of the Urban League is social and economic equality for black people. And that includes asset building and entrepreneurship. So we got to expose young folks and others to the story of black business and so we can inspire those in the future to do more. Monique Stubbs Hall here at Johnson C. Smith University. I am so excited to introduce you to some more bosses in the room. We are really excited about this event. It is uh, the theme of boss or uh, blacks in business. Um, and so I'd like to get your take on that. Tell us your name and tell us a little bit about what that theme means to you. Okay, okay, DJ Boss with Pinnacle Business USA, and just excited to just be able to just be in this energy. Uh, when we talk about energy, we're talking about black businesses that are doing something, um, that they're helping and aiding the community. Um, one of the things that's awesome, myself as well as uh, Veronica, uh, decided to partner. We had two niche uh, foundational companies that work very well together. So one of the things we wanted to do is create a partnership that not only fosters change, but it empowers. One of the things that we, we have learned is that uh, in our communities, we no longer are disseminating information. So having a documentary like this to, to come that, that gives us hope gives us power and let us know that what we're doing currently right now is definitely working. Uh, so we're excited about it. Just being a, a black business owner um, is, is monumental because of the, the strides we have to make um, when it comes to funding, when it comes to marketing, those strides that we have to make. So for us, it's important to be able to showcase the great talents, the creative energy that we currently have as a, as a nation and as a people. That's awesome. That's awesome. And the, and the best part about uh, this evening with the documentary is also the history, right? How do you feel about that? Absolutely. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us to not only acknowledge where we are, but where we've come from. And so that's really the reason I wanted to come today, to really just pay homage to the history. Absolutely. Well, we are so excited to have you here. Can you give me your name as well? Absolutely. I'm Veronica Sutherland. I am the CEO of Advanced Practice Care and Flow Hydration and Wellness here in Charlotte. All right. Well, thank you. And we're so happy to meet you two bosses in the Queen City. Enjoy the rest of the evening. All right. I am so excited uh, to be here at Johnson C. Smith University and to have the opportunity to do a little interview with, with you here. I'd like you to introduce yourself and tell us what you do in the Queen City of Charlotte. So my name is Raven Solomon. I am a keynote speaker on leadership and inspiration. I also am a new author, which I'm really yeah. excited about. And I own a training and development firm that teaches millennials and Generation Z soft skills. That is awesome. So I know for certainty that with what you do um, and working with millennials, that this event and this movie that we're going to observe a little later definitely is something that would have an impact um, on, on those that you work with. And, and tell me a little bit more about why you're excited about this boss movie. Yes, I am super duper excited because as an entrepreneur, uh, specifically an entrepreneur of color, I think it's important that we understand the history and where we've been in order to pioneer and make way for where we're going. And so to me, it's important to understand black business, the, the way it's um, shaped our culture so that I can continue to inform our culture and continue to mold and shape it uh, for the future. Yeah. 